Hey Hacklings, it's Wes again, and I'm coming back with a mod that I think you'll kind of enjoy. But uh, before I go into what the mod actually is and how to do it, I need to give you a little background on it and tell you where it came from and just how it evolved from there. So let's go look at that first. Alright, so the whole idea for this mod was basically born of me and Darren sitting here on the couch, just like this, playing video games, and we just kind of broke out into discussion. Dude, playing Street Fighter sucks with controllers! Dude, you ain't lying! I want an arcade so bad. I do too. You wanna go down to that crappy one at the pizza shop? Dude, that's not even a freaking arcade. There's none around here. Yeah. Dude, you know what we need? What? We need our own cab. We can't afford an arcade cabinet. Where do we have the room for it with the set and everything? Come on. Dude, I'm telling you, I can make a cab for less than a hundred bucks and it'll fit on a bar top. You serious? Yeah, I know I can do it. Can you do it for the show? Of course I'll do it for the show. Can you have it by Thursday? Thursday. Yeah, yeah, I can have it done by Thursday. All right. All right, my mission now is to build this mini arcade that'll fit on top of a bar counter and cost less than $100. So, first things first, I need to go do some design work. Hey, what's up, Wes? Hey, what's up, D? Chillin'. What you working on? I'm actually uh, working on the plans for the arcade as we speak. Oh, sweet. This is going to be on the show notes? Yeah, I'll have it in both a bitmap form and an actual .dwg in case our viewers want to modify it as they see fit. Sweet. All right, thanks, man. No problem. All right, design's taken care of. Now the next biggest thing is parts. We have spare computers lying around and spare game controllers lying around, so those are going to get recycled. However, we will not be using this. So... All right, we're gearing up to actually do all of our cuts and build this thing. But first things first, we need to take all of our plans, set them out, mark out all of our cuts on our piece of MDF, and make sure we've got enough wood for it. Just use a pencil. It's real easy. Marks really well. And when you're cutting, make sure you account for losing that eighth of an inch while using a saw. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. Everything's laid out. Time to cut. Now, safety tip. Make sure you follow all woodworking shop procedures while using power tools and keep your safety glasses on at all times. Well, except when watching the show. As far as cutting goes, since nobody's perfect, you're going to have to do some sanding to clean up those rough edges and maybe a couple of those uh, off cuts that you might have made using your jigsaw or your circular saw. So you can use a rotary tool to take out the big portions and get some half-decent hand sandpaper to really finish it up and make it look good. One of the really good accents that's going to make this feel like a real arcade is that plexiglass cover that you'll have over the screen. To make it look really good, you can paint an outside board. Damn it, paint! I'll be right back. God bless it. Alright, like I was saying, we're going to use a piece of plexi for the front bezel and you're going to paint the outside border so it gives that authentic look. You cut out your border, leaving the square in the middle, peel the protective film on the outside off. You paint that, and that paint's going to go on the inside, so when you look at it from the reverse side, it's going to look smooth, even, and just have a really, really nice gloss and an authentic look. Now that you've got all your cuts done, all that prep work, you can actually start to assemble it. Now, what I did was drill into both the edges and install L brackets on the inside so that way you have really really good support and you don't have to worry about it ever getting tipped over and torn up. So the cab's all assembled right now except one vital piece, your control deck. Now for controls we went to xrk.com and picked up their package deal. For 30 bucks you can pick up two joysticks and 20 buttons and those 20 buttons include white player one and player two buttons. If you want that really authentic feel, you can go to hapcontrols.com and pick up the same setup, but for about twice the price. Okay, now that we've got the buttons and joysticks mounted, we have a bigger issue to tackle. That is, how are we going to interface those with the computer? There's a few different ways of going about this. You can get a custom keyboard translator, like the iPack, but they're kind of pricey, so we decided to stay away from that. You can hack the interface of a keyboard directly, but since I already molested a Model M, I thought I might want to stay away from that. 
I'm sorry, Jen. So, we had some very inexpensive USB game pads lying around, so I decided to hack those. Let's go take a look at that. Alright, so what we have here is what's left over of our game pad. The way these things basically work is when you push the button down, it connects these two halves of this pad, completes the circuit, sends it to the IC, computer recognizes it. Now we have to get that kind of translation over to our actual arcade buttons. The way I went about this was you drill a hole in the trace for both the positive and the negative, solder a lead onto it, be very careful that your solder does not bridge the connection. Then on the other end, we just use these little quick connects. They slide right on these tabs here. So now, when you push this, it does the exact same thing that if you were to push a button on a normal gamepad. Computer does not know the difference and it works just as well. Alright Hacklings, here it is fully assembled, your own personal bar top arcade machine. Now let me point out a few key features. First things first, contact paper. Marbleized for most of the cab and the granite for the control deck. It looks really good and it saves you from painting. Okay, next, you can see all the buttons laid out here, but there's some accessory buttons that you cannot see right now. First are the pinball buttons on the side, so you get that same authentic feel, and on the back, I have a power button installed so you don't have to crawl in inside of the cab to turn the machine on. To get inside of the cab, if you need to do so, I've installed hinges and a latch on the back panel to make that access very easy. I'm going to go into the hardware next month, so hold tight. So, for less than $100 and about a weekend's worth of time, you can have your own personal arcade machine. So, any questions or comments, please see the show notes at hack5.org slash forums, and I will supply the building plans for you. But until then, it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Bring it. What you got, son? Oh.